the unique opportunity to come together, uh, to gather in this moment uh, as Democrats, but also on reflection of today's date, September 11th, uh, and in memory uh, of Gene and Paul Sullivan, the memorial breakfast. So let us center ourselves out of respect for all faiths and religions in a moment of prayer. As iron sharpens iron, so does one person sharpen another. Eternal and divine creator, as we gather here on this breakfast and this solemn day of remembrance, we humble ourselves before you. We acknowledge our human frailty, our grandiose instincts of self-importance, and the conflict that rages within each of us. It is these same deficiencies that caused us to engage in bickering, oppression, violence, and war. But it is you, O oh God, who has desired for us to have peace rather than experience the impact of your wrath. For you are a loving, caring, kind, and compassionate God who has desired for us to walk in sync with the precepts of those values emblazoned in our hearts. As iron sharpens iron, so does one person sharpen another. We pause to reflect on the loss of life, both here and abroad, that grew out of an orchestrated act of violence that was a reflection of the violence perpetuated throughout this world. As we mourn the magnitude of the destruction and the loss of life, let us never forget or lose sight of our responsibility to prevent destruction and loss of life by speaking truth to power, standing on the side of the oppressed, extending our hand of friendship and being guided by love. We pause together in a moment of solidarity after engaging in a political season we reposition ourselves to move forward together in unity with kindness of spirit, generosity of heart, and thoughts of love. Let us press our shoulders to the wheel in labor and one with another for a better nation. Let the challenges of the obstacles we face not become the stumbling blocks and division that prevent us from moving forward. As iron sharpens iron, so does one person sharpen another. Now take us, Lord, your handmaid servants, to execute your will of divine justice. Take us, the fruit of your divine love, and embolden our spirits to walk together in strength and unity so that we may transform not only the political landscape, but the landscape of the hearts and minds of the residents of this city, of this commonwealth, of this nation, and this world. We have been forged together across political ideologies, across racial identities, across ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, socioeconomic status, and faiths, so that we can be a nation that embodies the principles of freedom, liberty, and justice, not just for some, but for all. We also ask that you bless this food that has been prepared, the hands that have prepared it, and the bodies that will receive it. As iron sharpens iron, so does one person sharpen another. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, As you know, 21 years ago today, two planes crashed into the towers in 9-11. A lot of lives were lost that day at the towers, at the Pentagon, and in Pennsylvania. Today, the city of Brockton celebrated that day, or not celebrated, but uh, remembered that day at City Hall. That's where I just came from. Uh, I don't have a prepared speech, but I would just like to say, never forget because I certainly won't. I remember exactly where I was that day. I was on my way to New York, and uh, I got a phone call from one of the ladies that worked for me and said that a small plane had crashed into one of the towers. So everybody figured it was an accident, but it was no accident. So uh, I just want to remind everybody to remember those we lost, the fire department people, the police department people, EMTs, 
and all the civilians that we lost in those buildings. And just keep them in your prayers and we'll go forward. They built us, but they didn't break us. Thank you. Good morning, my fellow citizens. Welcome to the 21st annual Paul and Jean Sullivan breakfast, breakfast sponsored annually by the Brockton Democratic City Committee. I'm Deb Gowan, the chair of the committee and a lifelong Democrat. As we celebrate the results of the primary election, we need to reflect on the Democratic candidates selected in the last week's election. Before the election, we all chose our favorite candidate. We worked hard for their election and we wait, awaited the results. At that, time, at that time has passed. We have our chosen Democratic candidates and we are moving forward to the final decision. In spite of our differences, we must now unite and work tirelessly for a strong democratic victory in November. That should not be difficult. We have a fabulous slate of candidates led by Maura Healy for governor, Kim Driscoll for lieutenant governor, and of course our own state senator, Michael Brady. We also have our first democratic candidate for DA, Rosan Hall. It's very important that today we jo all join together in action, support and belief in our candidates and the values of our Democratic Party. I want to thank you all for joining us today, and my hope is to see you all out pounding the pavement for our candidates. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Janice Johnson Plumer, and along with uh, Stephen Thomasy, uh, we are the scholarship committee. And every year we have, through the Brockton Democratic City Committee, the opportunity to award a scholarship uh, to the applicant, to a candidate that is a Democrat, uh, that lives in Brockton, and they are in the pursuit of their college degree. You and I know very well the cost of education is very expensive. Every coin, every dollar matters. And that doesn't even include the books on top of that and other fees that you may have to pay. So you're looking to aspire, you're looking to continue your education and learn and grow, but yet that comes with a cost. So again, on behalf of the Democratic Committee, this year's 2022 recipient is Ms. Danielle Torres. The scholarship uh, is $1,000, and I would like to but also, I'd like for her to come and just tell you uh, her aspirations and goals, what she has planned and what she would like to do. And it's our hope that next year we will have multiple applicants. Because again, $1,000 can go a long way. I have a son in college. I know and I understand. So every penny counts. But we would like to have Ms. Danielle Torres come and tell us about herself. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Danielle Torres. <laughs> my name is Torres. On this summer day of 9-11, I am honored to be the recipient of the Jean and Paul Sudinsky Scholarship. Thank you for your generous support. I am currently majoring in criminology at Stonehill College. My goal is to recognize deviant human behavior and create ways to stop it. I want to continue to volunteer uh, with my volunteer opportunities, such as being an election poll worker, and hope to do more things in my community as COVID restrictions are continually lifted. Thank you again for your investment in student like, students like me. My educational pursuits will not be possible without your generous support from scholarships such as yours. Thank you for enabling this opportunity. I feel truly blessed. Yeah. like to say she her parents are also here if they'd like to stand up because without the parents always at a moment's ready
this year, we'd like to thank the executive board members, starting with the chair, Deborah Garland. Uh, I'll skip over myself, you know, uh, the first vice chair, but second vice chair, Janice Johnson Plumer. Our secretary, Greg Maynard. Here somewhere. Place in the back, probably for the Patriots game. Uh, Treasurer De Deborah Mullen. <laughs> Our Ward 1 Chair Donna Jones. <laughs> serving the food. She gave me some pastries this morning. Uh, Ward 3 Chair Steve Thomasy. <laughs> He's a history buff, so get your uh, info from him. Uh, Ward 4 Chair Susan DeCastro. We have uh, Ward 5 Chair Kerry Richards. Ward 6 Chair John Brzezinskis. Ward 7 Chair Jimmy Pereira. Here. And our membership chair Michelle Dubois. Finally, last but not least, our Affirmative Action Advisor, Jamie Hodges. Thank you. So at this time, I would like to announce all the, the candidates that have joined us as of yet. Um, we have, if you could stand, Greg Shanahan, Weymouth Town Counselor. Robert Juvenal, Juven, Juvenal. <laughs> Juvenelli. Juvenville. Juvenville. Okay. Uh, Governor Counselor. Um, Gwen Farwell, Brockton City Counselor at Large. Joe O'Sullivan, Hanson Democratic Town Committee. Kathy Pascal. Pascal, sorry. Hanson Town Dem. Chair. Rasan Hall, District Attorney. John Buckley, Register of Deeds. Tony Branch, Chair of the SERSD, I think that's Southeastern Regional. Commissioner, Patrick Quinn, National Assistant Secretary Treasurer of the International Cinematography Guild. Yeah. Susan DeCastro, Brockton City Councilor, Board 4. Jack Lally, Brockton City Council President, Ward 6. And I see Matt McDonough, hey. Plymouth County. Register of Probate. Register of Probate has just joined us. And Carlos De Silva, previous candidate for, well, for candidate for Plymouth County Commission. Thank <laughs> you. 
Paul Studinsky, former city councilor, Ward <laughs> 4. Anybody else? Got two school councilors for Rockland. Whitman, I'm sorry, Rockland and TCJ. Whitman School Committee, School Committee, Dave Ford. Dave Ford, Whitman. Whitman School Committee, John Byers. <laughs> sorry, do I have anybody else? Rockland, D.C. Chair. We have a room full. So. And then we have uh, candidates running for office. We have Je um, Jamie Hodges, who's running for uh, school committee at Southeastern. I don't see Jerry Cassidy. Yeah, he's not here. And um, Mike Brady's not here. So um, that's it for who's here. Thank you. At this moment, we will have our candidates, uh, give our candidates the opportunity to come up and speak. So if you want to chow down the rest of your food and finish up that bite, because we're going to have a uh, candidate of Rashawn Hall come up. And see, I see that in the headlights. <laughs> the candidates speak, uh, so we'll give you about uh, two minutes tops and uh, <coughs> time wise. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Jimmy, and to Deb, and to the members of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. Thank you all uh, for gathering here today on this momentous occasion. My name is Rasan Hall, and I'm a, a candidate for Plymouth County District Attorney. Uh, many. I'm running to reclaim the spirit of justice. And for those of you who got here after the morning invocation, the reason I have on a clergy collar is because I'm an ordained reverend and I offered uh, the morning invocation. Um, I've been telling people you're going to learn about asking a preacher and a lawyer to come and address you on a Sunday uh, because I might end up preaching. Well, this time they kind of reined that in by asking me to do the invocation. So you don't have to bear through much. Uh, but I will say that this idea of reclaiming the spirit of justice is based on a notion that there's been too much injustice within the criminal legal system for far too long. This idea of law and order gets misplaced. Reverend Dr. King once said that law and order exist to create justice. But when they fail in that purpose, law and order becomes a, 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 a dam that prevents social progress. And so we have a lot of politics and tough on crime rhetoric about what should be happening in the system, but it's not creating justice. And so my vision for this office is one that produces more justice. It's one that cares for victims and survivors of crimes, making sure that they're treated with dignity and respect. It's one that increases the level of transparency and accountability within the system so that as residents of Plymouth County, we know what's being said in our names, done in our names, and done on our tax dollars. It's one that focuses on taking a harm reduction approach for people who are struggling with substance use disorder and mental health issues within the criminal legal system. Make sure that they get the services and treatment that they need instead of just merely punishing them. It's also one that focuses on being intentional about addressing some of the racial disparities that exist within the system. And lastly, it's about community engagement, making sure that the residents of Plymouth County understand what it is their office, the DA's office is doing, but also is engaged in the process of priority setting for the office, making sure that there's input and impact from community partners and community organizations and people with lived experience so that we can get the best outcomes for our county. For the last two decades, we've been under administration that has resulted in several wrongful convictions. We've been under an administration where people are sentenced far too long for minimal crimes. We've been under an administration where the smallest and most minor crimes are prosecuted at the highest level. We need to break that down and get more justice and more equity and more movement within the court system, more engagement from our community so that we have don't have people continuing to cycle through the system. And so that is the vision of justice that I bring. I'm a resident of the city of Brockton. 
I also bring that experience as a civil rights attorney, an ordained reverend, and a former prosecutor myself in Suffolk County, where I spent eight years prosecuting gun, drug, and homicide cases. So I know what the work is. I know what it is and appreciate what it is that law enforcement does, but I also know how the heavy hand of law enforcement and this system bears down on some communities more than it does on others. And that's why we need to change this. And that hopefully with you all's support, we can ra raise up to victory and make sure that we get this office that's been held by Republicans since 1996 back in the hands of Democrats. And lastly, yeah, I'd like to say And lastly, to our scholarship winner, Ms. Tavares, I'm an adjunct at Stonehill College. I didn't see you in any of my classes, but maybe in the future. But also, your desire to study criminal justice is just what we need. People with experience from different communities yes. and different backgrounds yes. to bring that experience into this system. So hopefully I get an opportunity to connect with you because we've got to change this thing around. So thank you all, and thank you for voting for Curry Esquire is here to address, be our keynote speaker. Um, give a warm welcome for him. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. A little bit of call and response. I need more than that. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, it is knock stuff off the podium. Um, it is an honor and a privilege to join you this morning for the Jean and Paul Sullivan 21st Memorial Breakfast and to be invited to provide some brief remarks as you gather again to celebrate democratic ideals. Hear from candidates and reconnect in person with longtime friends and family after two and a half years of a pandemic. I want to remind us, there have been well over 2 million cases, reported cases of COVID-19 in Massachusetts, and over 21,500 deaths, over 1 million lives across the United States, and over 6.5 million deaths across the world. As a public health person, this morning I start here because I don't want us to get weathered to disease and the loss of life, mostly by those who were socially vulnerable, couldn't shelter in place, had comorbidities, too many were black and brown, they were our seniors, first responders, essential workers, lest we forget. I want to join others in recognizing the tragic anniversary of 9-11 that day that took close to 3,000 American lives, including some 206 people with ties to Massachusetts. Today is also a day of reflection and an opportunity to say their names. Again, lest we forget, as I was on the way here this morning, I drove by the fire station on Pleasant Street as the firefighters and Mayor Sullivan gathered outside to commemorate the lives of those lost. Chair Garland, thank you. To the veterans of VFW Post 1046 and your fellow veterans across the state and country, thank you for your service. I have very fond memories of growing up in VFW Post, participating in oratorical contests in middle school and high school, participating in Boy State where I would become governor in 1990 after tremendous encouragement and support from the men and women who served. Just under a week out from the primary election, I reminded of a few quotes about how critical elections are and how important it is that we exercise the franchise to make democracy work for all Americans. Samuel Adams said, let each citizen remember at the moment he is offering his vote that he is executing one of the most solemn trusts in, a, in human society for which he is accountable to God and his country. Dr. Martin Luther King said, 
so long as I do not firmly and irrevocably possess the right to vote, I do not possess myself. I cannot make up my mind. It is made up for me. And equally as relevant today, he said, now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Thomas Jefferson said, we do not have government by the majority, we have government by the majority who participate. And finally, President Barack Obama said, we are reminded that in the fleeting time we have on this earth, what matters is not the wealth, our status, our power, our fame, but rather how well we have loved and what small part we have played in making the lives of other people better. To me, that's what the Gene and Paul Sullivan 21st Memorial Breakfast is all about. Executing that solemn trust. Making our own minds up. Participating like our lives depended on it. And making a difference in the lives of others. So, the chairwoman didn't have to twist my arm to be here with you today. <laughs> I want to personally thank and applaud each and every one of you for making democracy work. You're registering voters, doing battle with the belief by some that my vote doesn't matter. You are elected and appointed officials. You are engaging in the critical issues of our time like jobs, quality public education, workers' rights, affordable housing, climate change systemic and institutional racism, police accountability, and gun violence. That's why I'm here. You are burdened with the consciousness of knowing what happens when we don't show up to our courts, to our ability to build back better, to our constitutionally protected rights, to our public health and public safety, and to our standing as a nation. I often share that saying that if you're not at the table, you're on the table, or you're on the menu. Ooh. Now I'm gonna need some folks, and I know some folks are older in the room, but I need you to tweet this and Facebook this. <laughs> if you're not at the table, you're on the table, or you're on the menu. You get that and have invested so much of your time and energy making sure that we're at the table or we bring our own table. Please give yourselves a round of applause. I'm not a Brockton native, but I've raised my sons in Brockton. My sons attended the Hancock School, West Junior High, and Brockton High School. They played basketball for the Brockton Boxers. Proud that I have a son who graduated Brockton High and is now a graduate of St. John's University. Proud, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Prepared him well. Proud that I have another son who graduated Brockton High who did his first year at Michigan State and now transferred is at Norfolk State University. And proud that my youngest son, who is a phenomenal young man, graduated West Junior High and will be attending Thayer Academy, as actually is attending Thayer Academy right now. Uh, I am blessed to have raised my boys in Brockton. <laughs> if you come by our house on Marlene Avenue, you will see that we wear the, the black and red in my house often. <laughs> I've been fortunate to serve under three mayors in Brockton. I served on the transition team for Mayor Belzati. Was an advisor and good friend to Bill Carpenter. Served on the social justice task force with my newest friend, Mayor Sullivan. I walked these streets in Brockton with the late Leonard C. Alkins, my mentor, who would often share the rich history and legacy of Brockton. I'm also honored to represent the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center as the CEO of the Massachusetts League of Community Health Centers. So as I stand here today to provide some brief remarks, I tell you I have been witness to the, how great this city is. 
and how much potential there is to be even greater, to stand even taller, to truly make every citizen, resident, person of this city of champions feel included. That's the challenge I think we have in front of us, or all of us here today. Um, I stand here today thankful for what you all do, and when the chair asked me to provide some brief remarks, I thought about how critical it is that we do this work and we do it with a sense of urgency. We are a very divided nation. You don't have to look far to figure out how divided we are. We're divided by our politics. We're divided by race. We're divided in so many ways, and I, I challenge all of you today that I think, as my good friend, attorney Rasan Hall knows, I always ask people to go back in history to understand why we're divided. Because I think we often have these ahistorical conversations to understand what makes the divisions between us. I challenge people on the issue of racism. I say, take a second and pause. And think about this country we live in. Think about the disproportionate number of black and brown folks who live in poverty, who die of almost every disease I can name at a higher rate, living five, 10 years less than white Americans, that are missing in our medical schools and our law schools, that are desperately in our prisons, higher rates of incarceration. So I ask you as the Procton Democratic City Committee, why is that? Is that these people are not as anxious to build wealth? That they want to be in prison, that they don't want to sit in C-suites, they don't want to be mayors and governors and congrats. I have to ask you the question because for some reason we forgot how we got here. And the reality is we got to know the history. My children always wanted to be great. Those kids in Southside Chicago always wanted to be great. In North Minneapolis, always wanted to be great. But circumstances got in the way. Yes. So I think what we are is right now at this critical moment of thinking about how do we face history and then do something about it. If you never thought about this issue of diversity, and I, I do this all the time, and I tell people there's a little black girl sitting in Southside Chicago right now that's meant to find a cure for cancer and you'll never know her. That's how much talent is dispersed among all of us no matter what our difference is. We will never know her because she's living in a community with violence. Because she's coming from a community where her school is a level four and is not performing academically, not providing her the academic rigor she needs. Because she's internalized racism. I can't be a doctor because I'm because some teacher, some guidance counselor doesn't think she's qualified or, or smart enough to be one. So when we think here, we sit here today and we talk about what the potential is of Brockton in our country, I challenge you to let you know that we're leaving talent on the table. We're leaving talent on the table that every single one of you should care about. So I don't want you to think about diversity from, well, it would be a nice thing to do to have more people serve to have more people run, to have more people in positions of DA and, and Secretary of State and City Councilor and School Committee, I need you to understand that we all are tethered to the success of our nation with the diversity that we have. That we need every black and brown, every white boy and girl to be successful. And that we all suffer when we're not. So while I'm glad to be here today and provide some brief remarks, I think I'm encouraged because of the work of this committee, because of the work of the folks that I know in this room who really get this stuff more than most. And I used the phrase earlier, I said, you're burdened with consciousness. Rasan, you know what I mean. There's something real difficult when you know the truth. Because people don't always want to talk the real. It's real to know the truth. Right, even in politics, when you know what the repercussions is, when people don't show up, it hurts to know the truth. I often say about the issue of racism, I say, I think of the movie Sixth Sense with Bruce Willis. How many people saw that movie? And the classic line from that movie was what? I see dead people. 
And I use that as an analogy, but I use it in race, but it also can be in the, in the issues of politics. That it's easier not to see it. That the little boy didn't want to see those people who wanted to help him to help them cross over or say goodbye to a loved one because it came with a burden. You, you would be crazy to see them. That means you'd have to show up and say something at the meeting, that you'd have to show up in the community. That, that means you may have to join the protest. That means you may have to vote. So I ask people, what do you see? Are you running from seeing all the injustices and inequities and disparities in society, or are you ready in this moment? Because I think people ask me all the time, Michael, is this a moment or a movement? Is this another moment or a movement? And I ask you, what is it to you? Because being a student of history, I know that it all depends on what you do now. What you do now. If not you, then who? If not now, then when? So I will just leave you with some words of the former chairman of the NAACP. I've been honored to serve. For those who don't know the history of the NAACP, and I see my NAACP colleagues and Brock here as well, an organization that was created in 1908 with a race ride in Springfield, Illinois, for people who don't know this history. Two black men in Springfield, Illinois were accused of attacks on white women, separate attacks. They were arrested, put in jail, and when the town found out that these two black men were accused, of attacks on white women, they marched on the jail and wanted to lynch them. Springfield, Illinois was the birthplace of Abraham Lincoln. So if you walk through Springfield in 1908, they talked about the great emancipator. And in that town, thousands of people marched on the jail and then went on a killing spree and a burning spree in Springfield, Illinois. You haven't even heard this history. And I always celebrate the, the compass Rasan, I'm not talking about your, your gut, because your gut will get you to do a lot of things wrong. I'm talking about your compass. Your compass comes from reading the souls of black folk or the new Jim Crow. That comes from reading our history. A white sheriff and a white businessman moved those two black men some 40 plus miles out of town to save their lives. Killing spree in Springfield, Illinois. Here's why I tell you the story. White citizens across the country at the risk of their own lives, organized what they call the National Negro Committee of 40 with black leaders in 1908 and 1909, and organized what would become the National NAACP, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. How many of you knew that history? So few of you know that history. So when you think about the organization, I have an honor to serve on a national board that I was had the honor to serve as president of a Boston branch for six years. I do that proudly because I know the beginning. If you know the beginning, the end won't trouble you is an African proverb. If you know the beginning, the end won't trouble you. So right now, as we lift up these voices of social justice and civil rights, I ask you, what is your role? I ask you, can you be like William English Walling who wrote the article Race War in the North about the Springfield race riot? that then led to everyone reading about it and then coming together. I asked you, are you like Mary White Ovington, the white woman who organized and said, no, I want to be part of this movement. She reached out to W.B. Du Bois. She would become the first white woman to join the Niagara movement. I ask you, are you like Moorfield Story, the white Roxbury lawyer who would become the first president of the Boston NAACP while he also served as president for the national NAACP. I ask you, where's the Ida B. Wells in this room? Where's the Martin Luther King in this room? Because like you, I just like to go on and raise my family and just sort of put my head down and, and pay bills, take my kids to school, and hope everything works out. But that's not how democracy works. So while you urge people to vote, while you're knocking on doors and reminding people why they need to vote, we all need to show up. We need to show up on these issues that matter to the people in the communities around us and not just those in our household or those in our direct neighborhood. We need to show up for people. 
So I, I thank you to the Democratic City Committee again for all the work that you do. And it's an honor and a privilege to join you. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that wonderful, beautiful speech. Thank you again. Please just round of applause for our pretty, uh, that's for Michael Curry. All right, now at this moment, we will have uh, the rest of the candidates speak. And actually, uh, I see uh, State Representative Jerry Cassidy just walked in. He's over there somewhere. That's uh, Senator Mike Brady at the door. With the nice <laughs> avian glasses on. There you go, MacGyver. Um, all right, so now we'll have uh, some candidates speak. So if I can have candidate for Southeastern uh, Regional School Committee, I think I got that right, uh, Jamie Hodges. Right, we'll start the clock at two minutes, and uh, we are timing. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. So good morning, everyone, and I want to thank Jeff Garland, Jimmy, and the rest of the Democratic City Committee for inviting me to speak this morning. As many of you know, my name is Jamie Hodges, and I'm running for Southeastern Regional School Committee. A little bit about myself, I am a lifelong Brockton resident. I am a 2012 graduate from Brockton High School. In 2016, I received my bachelor's degree from Regis College. And in 2020, I received my master's degree in management from LaSalle University. I currently sit on the Democratic City Committee as the Affirmative Action Advisor. I sit as an alternate member on the Brockton Zoning Board of Appeals. And I also started a nonprofit known as the African American Association here in our great city of champions, Brockton. My commitment in if elected, is to bring partnership and stability to the Southeastern School Committee and to work with other committee members and the school administration to provide the best possible programs and services to students. <clears throat> Voting for Jamie means you're ready to put your gloves on and dig your hands in the dirt and to plant the seeds that will continue to grow and be a success for all Southeastern Regional students. I humbly ask for your support on November 8th in the general election. Bishop Tony Branch, uh, current seat uh, for the uh, chair. chair of the uh, Southeastern uh, Committee Board. Thank you. I think everybody knows me, so you don't have to do much of an announcement. Clap your hands if you're a real Democrat. I'm sorry, clap your hands if you're a real Democrat. So here's my bio. I'm a black boy that was homeless in Roxbury, Massachusetts. I ate McDonald's trash in order to survive through my middle school and high school years. Public education was what kept me alive and my faith in God is what kept me moving forward in life. My faith has kept me moving in the right way of liberty and justice. Can y'all can let me talk? One of the things that you all did today, you said liberty and justice. Well, the parents at Southeastern Regional want you to vote for me if you believe in liberty in terms of the reduction of the gap between black and whites at that school. For four years, and I'm speaking like this for a reason, four whole years, I was the only person of color on Southeastern. And it was hard. I needed that school committee room to be filled with the good character, grace, mercy, and love that is in this room today. It has been hard for black students in that district. So this election is about having a strong voice. This election is about the experience that you know that's going to speak up for those children, whether they're black or white. But let me be clear to you, the school year ended 
with racial epithets in the bathroom that traumatized black children at that school. And people didn't get it. The business of education, when it comes to people that look like me, is serious business. I'm frustrated that I hear people say, well, it's not a race issue. It absolutely is. We've seen the, we've seen the achievement gaps. We've seen the achievement. We know we have the documentation. For those of you who have academics beyond my theology, it's called evidence-based. And the evidence says that we can do better when it comes to people, children that look like me. If you believe in justice, true justice, then not one empty chair should be at that regional school committee when we began in September. I'm Tony Branch, the homeless kid that went from homeless to preaching to the chair of a school committee, the first African-American chair of a school committee in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I believe in you because you believe in me. Thank you. All right. Uh, so now at this moment, we will have a couple other uh, candidates speak. We'll have uh, uh, State Representative Jerry Cassidy, followed by uh, Senator Tom, uh, Tom Brady, Mike Brady. <laughs> the go, yeah, he is close to, close to Tom Brady. That'd be great. All right, we have uh, State Rep uh, Jerry Cassidy. Is he still in? Did he slip out? I think he did. I can't see him. All right, there you go. Is that Michelle? That's not Michelle DeBar. Oh, that is Michelle DeBar. I'm getting old, so I can't really see that far. All right, so we'll have uh, State Rep Michelle DeBar come up, and then uh, followed by Senator Brady. Thank you, Vice Chairman. I am happy to be here with all of you. And, um, you know, give it up for our speakers today, right? And being a Democrat. Woo -hoo! Go blue is what I always say. And I'm happy to be here with each and every one of you. Um, earlier this morning, I was at a solemn tribute to uh, those we lost at 9-11. And it's a very significant day for our nation. So I just wanted to um, comment on that and say, of course, I was around back then, and I'm, you know, we came on a stronger nation, but so sad for the lives that we lost. And um, sorry about the sad part, but it is what it is with history and all. I'm honored to be a state representative for Brockton, West Bridgewater, and East Bridgewater. And as of January, I will be a state representative, and my district will only be in Brockton. It will be all of Ward 4, all of Ward 5. <laughs> And all of Ward 6, which is the 10th Plymouth District. It is a minority majority opportunity voting district, which means that the seats in Brockton in our population is um, a majority non-white city. And it brings its own challenges around oppression and um, attainment of justice in school funding. And uh, I, I fashion myself and I challenge myself each and every day to be a fighter for justice and to be a partner in our, in, our, in our world seeking justice for people. And so I'm happy to be here with you and that's why I'm a Democrat, guys. That's why I am a Democrat. Fighting for workers, fighting for women, fighting for victims, fighting for people of color, fighting for our environment, fighting for unions, and fighting for our world. So I'm honored to be here with you, provide leadership when I can, and to be your partner 100% of the time. Thank you very much. Thank you, State Representative Michelle Dubois. Hey. Hey. Yes. And before I bring Senator Tom Brady, I mean Mike Brady, to the stage. Um, unfortunately, the mayor of uh, Brockton could not be here today. Uh, he is a little sick under the weather. Um, but we uh, send our best wishes, and uh, hopefully he'll be here next year with us. Uh, and at this time, uh, Senator uh, Brady, at, to the stage, please. As we, as we know, Tom Brady makes more money than probably all of us here, so... Um, before I start, though, we, we had a solemn a memorial occasion today. It's the 21st 
unfortunate, the 21st anniversary of September 11th. And before I speak, uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Congressman Lynch, who was at the September 11th memorial ceremony this morning at the City Hall. He has other districts, as we all do, to represent, so he couldn't make it today because there's a lot of solemn events going across the Commonwealth. I know Representative Cassie is heading into the State House, and I'm going to be heading in there shortly because we're going to have a memorial ceremony there. But if we could all just do a moment of silence in, in memory of all those lost on September 11th, please. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I know most of us remember that day very vividly. It was a beautiful, sunny day, and there was an election going on. And um, I know Congressman Lynch, thank God he won, because um, some people were calling the election off. And no other country should decide our fate. We should be in charge of our own fate in this country. And that's the freedoms that our forefathers fought for the right to vote, the right to assemble, like we have at the VFW today. I want to thank all our First responders, our police and firefighters, they they are going to be in the state house today as well, and, and our veterans, because every day they put their lives on the line so we can assemble here, and especially at this Holland Hall, the VFW of Brockton. I'm grateful for all your support. Um, I, I've been in, in, born and raised in the community, and I want to thank you for your support. I do have an election coming up in November, and I'm asking for your continued support, because I wouldn't be here with a, a lot of people in this room without your support. And I'm grateful and thank you for all your support day in and day out. And to all those who, who ran in this past election, whether you won or lost, I want to thank you for putting your, your, um, you know, your, your name on the ballot this past election. Everybody deserves a lot of credit who puts a time and effort into running for public office. And um, you all deserve a lot of credit. And uh, we are supporting the ticket from the top down, from the governor's race all the way down to the local race. <laughs> And again, thank you very much for your support, and I'm going to pass it on to the next speaker, but I'm just grateful to be here, and God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. All right, thank you, Senator Brady. Good luck today's game. <laughs> all right, so at this uh, moment, I will have our... Uh, our, uh, our uh, primary winner, uh, state representative, yeah. state representative, Rita Mendez. represent the city as you know the first minority uh, candidate ever elected to the state house from Brockton so I'm just really really honored it was um, a tough race but now we're here and as Democrat we come together so I want to work with all of us all of us together for the city of Brockton and really coming together as in unity as one party so I really want to thank everybody who worked so hard in this campaign and now just know that I'm here to really represent all of us for the city of Brockton. And also in November, we have um, a lovely sticker candidate that is going on to November. So make sure you keep um, supporting me in that final push in November. And then on to um, January, once getting sworn in to working for the city. So thank you, thank you for the opportunity of being here. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Right, thank you, our uh, elected uh, state representative, uh, Rita Mendez. All right, so at this time, we'll be uh, concluding the program, but want to make sure that everybody knows that there's more food on the table, so please bring some more uh, home with you as well. Also, um, Oh, we didn't mention uh, Matt McDonough, uh, probate court, the, uh, is here uh, as well. Matt, Matt McDonough. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we might have had to make sure we mentioned. And Phyllis Ellis, president of the NAACP. Yeah. 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 Right. Make sure I 
God, everybody. All right, again, there is Pinnacle Partnership here. Thank you all for attending. Uh, they are giving out free vaccines, so please go out there and get some more information. Oh. And please, remember to vote, 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 Tuesday, November 8th. Is that 8th or 6th? 8th. 8th, all right, great. I told you I'm going, getting old, I'm going blind. And again, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, it is a somber day, 9-11. We hold everybody in our memories, uh, but the fight goes on. We'll make sure to do that because that is the American way. Thank you. God bless.